Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Holy Toledo's. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? I'm really outdoing myself tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thanks for being patient. Uh, we're a little bit of a one horse uh, wrecking crew here today. Um, but I do have my brother helping me a little bit, but uh, in between flies, I have to write a description so that you guys can read and not just see me, but for the hearing impaired, they can go down below and see in the description what it is that we're tying. But as you can see here, if you go and you can see down at the bottom corner here, this is a little bit of the bunny leech intruder style fly that uh, takes only a few minutes to tie. It's super, super simple, but it would work for pretty well anything i would say trout salmon steelhead and then in in streams but then you could turn once this thing is wet it collapses down on itself and actually looks like a leech not just a fish so in, in moving water the whole back tail everything flows together and then once you put it in still water you strip it and it's going through the water like this it looks like a leech so, I mean, fished in different situations, it's going to represent different things. So, let's get busy tying this fly. I don't want to give away too much of this secret because then you guys will never want to go fishing with me. What are we on? Camera three right now? Let's go on camera four. I'll give this thing a little slow roll. And while we're doing that, I'm just going to make sure that I got everything that I need to tie this beautiful fly. Beautiful. Because it is very beautiful. So, we're going to give this little fella. That's a big fella because we're tying it on a two odd hook once again. She's big and beautiful. Get in my belly because I'm hungry. Very hungry. I don't even know what accent I'm. Just, yeah, I'm losing it. I'm it's losing Scottish. it. Scottish. That's right. The Scots have got some. Uh, I think they've got fantastic Atlantic trout or Atlantic salmon fishing, and they got good trout fishing too. But if they ever came to BC, they'd be pretty stoked to be here too. So, anyhow, you've seen this thing rolled about four times. That's plenty of times for me to get busy with the vice and show you how to tie this beautiful masterpiece. Get busy, not dizzy. Yeah, get busy, not dizzy, as the cameraman saying. So we're going to start off again with the same fly hook. It's an SL73UBLN-36890 and a size 2 watt. It's a salmon hook. I'll hold it as still as I can. Very still. You noticed I have the hands of a surgeon. And the looks of a model. And the intelligence. Who's really intelligent? Einstein. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. I don't know who that is, but uh, I don't get out get out much. Full rotary vice here, the Griffin Mon Montana mongoose. So we're going to start it off. I would prefer to tie this fly with red thread, just because I like red on the head, not only for leeches but for uh, for minnow patterns. It just kind of gives that wounded wounded like fleshy bleeding look it's awesome so if you do have red three aught that's what you want to use pink works too as you saw with that last one all i'm going to do is put a little bit of thread down on the base of this something for that fly to bind to so that it's not coming apart you're not going to see any of this so don't worry about how tight and how beautiful you're laying it down there just get it down there and get it down as quick as you can as the show must go on nip this one off back end so rabbit strip comes in all this like zonker strips come in as you can see I'm gonna pull it through there slow boom rabbit strip and that's uh, in blue so I've cut a little chunk of it and what I've done so if you do just a little bit, like the, the body itself, you see the, the underbelly is almost the same length as that 2 watt. What I'm going to do is cut a slow, slight taper into this on one side that way. 
when you tie it down it's not too too crazy bulky as long as you anchor it that's all you want but you don't want to beef it up too much and it's got to be right up on top lock it down ladies and gentlemen right on top it's all about that profile making sure that those toothy fish can't tear that thing apart now another product that we really like here at uh, Friday Night Flies is lateral flash lateral flashaboo and my kids must have got into my fly tie and stuff it's easy to blame your kids when things are going wrong so I'm gonna blame my kids on this one it looks like it's all tied in knots and if you see there was a sticky eye in there so lateral flash it comes in these packages that's what it looks like this one is the uh, chartreuse but that is what it looks like on the card yep. so this point all you're gonna do is take one one strand okay one strand is the, the important part you're gonna go down both sides so one on this side one on the other side lay it in there lock it down and what you're gonna do with this lateral flash you pick up the tail pull it back just go past the tip of the fur bingo cut it now we're gonna go over to the other side do the same thing okay rotary voice makes it really easy because if I had to climb over top of this you guys wouldn't be able to see what I was doing same thing on the side lock it down break down the side boy I had my tongue out again there concentration to the fullest same thing match it up somewhat to the other one that you got boom bingo bango save these little chunks that you have left over because once you start getting crazy with this stuff and it's flowing through the thing with that lateral flash is that it can really take over a fly quickly because it's it's bulky but it's got the lateral kinks in it so that it actually looks like scales so when it's moving through the water it looks like scales so now the contrast is two colors so a lighter blue in the tail and now we're gonna go to a purple to duplicate what we have in the description and the same thing what we're gonna do is cut a slight taper into the head of this so that you're not bulking it up too much boom little taper little taper bingo bango lay this guy back and what what you know before I do that I'm gonna just go up here I missed a step here but we're not gonna miss it on live television today ladies and gentlemen we are not gonna miss it so I caught it before I missed it so we're running 3 sixteenths uh, dumbbell eyes and Dumbbell eyes have been really, really popular as of late here at Spud Valley Sporting Goods in Pemberton, 1380 Birch Street. And I am absolutely cleaned out. I have zero dumbbell eyes. I know, it's hard to believe. But uh, dumbbell eyes right now are trending. So if you guys have a secret stash of them, we will have a secret stash here once again. Uh, probably Monday or Tuesday but there you go ladies and gentlemen you want to look down the barrel make sure it's square to your fly at this point what we're gonna do give this bottle a little shape because it's getting down to the nitty-gritties lay this guy down on top and what this is gonna do is make that thing damn near bulletproof I'm missing my UV light here I need my UV light somebody help me please thank you okay so uv light look at the smoke come off that sucker did you see the smoke flying yes so we'll give that a little bit and it doesn't take long for that uv resin to clear or to set There's a little bit of stuff going on in the background here but hopefully you guys aren't hearing too much of that okay now that we got the dumbbell eyes are in place makes the transition a little bit easier so you want to kind of fill that stage down a little bit 
and back up to the head behind that. Now I've got this chunk that I cut the nice beautiful taper into. You want to get a little bit of this loose stuff off. And what we're going to do is just lay that in there just like so. You don't want to trap the tail. You want to bring it up tight to the tail and lock it down. Think of all the money I'm saving you ladies and gentlemen out there. I'm going to tie in these flies. And we're going to just bring this up. Actually, I'll put it in behind because all I'm going to do... Actually, I'll go ahead and then I'll tie it off and then I'll use a rotary features of this beautiful griffin vise. Bingo bango, bring the bobbin cradle over. And all we're going to do is work this up to the behind the dumbbell eyes. You don't want to trap any of this stuff, but you'll find that it kind of finds its own little happy place as you're going. So you're wrapping this guy up all the way behind the head, the dumbbells. You don't want to get too much in behind there because as you're going to find out here in about two seconds is that we're going to throw a quick dubbing loop in there and then we're going to bring it all back sexy time. Yeah, I had one too many wraps there. So now bring this back in behind. All we're going to do is try our best not to trap too much of that rabbit hair as you're going around. Lock it down. As you can see, you kind of wiggle it through that fine, fine rabbit hair, trying not to trap too much of it. And then a couple in front just to lock it in place. And then you're going to carefully cut that rabbit strip away and not cut your thread. <laughs> this, mm -hmm. this is the tricky spot because when you have this much hair kicking it right behind dumbbell eyes, it can be borderline dangerous. Oh, we got lucky. We got lucky. Ah, that was educated. So what you're going to do, peel this back a little bit. And you're just going to make sure that that rabbit is locked down. The last thing you want to do is unravel. If it unravels or spins on you, forget about it. You might as well just throw that fly away or start over again. So now, trick. A little bit of juice on your fingers. A little bit of juice on your fingers. Peel that back. If you've got a bowl of water and you know you're going to be tying lots of these, this is the trick. You get that back. What we're going to do is tie in a quick dubbing loop. And don't make it too small because the thing is, is when you're wrapping around big dumbbell eyes, is that it eats up thread real quick. Okay, so you got your dubbing hook here somewhere. Dubbing hook. Get your last off of there and just let it hang. Now what we're going to do is throw a quick whip finish. We got many people watching. Six, seven thousand people. Five thousand. Five thousand. That's not bad. Not bad. I thought we would have had it up around seven or eight thousand, but uh, <clears throat> my jokes just aren't that funny tonight. Swedish bikini team. Oh, the Swedish bikini team's in the house tonight. Yeah. Okay, ladies, how you doing? Or that, was that the men's bikini team or is that the ladies? <laughs> the banana hammocks. <laughs> oh, the, okay, so that's the men. The gentleman's uh, <laughs> bikini team is watching tonight, of course. I don't know if that just gave me hard nipples or what just happened there. But, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awkward. Now I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> okay, so so much going on here. I had a bag of black dubbing. There it is. So, Spirit Creek, or Spirit River, well, we're going to call it Spirit Creek tonight. They make this stuff. It's black lightning dub. And we got this beautiful dubbing loop hanging down below. All you're going to do is pull some of this sparse stuff out, and we're going to throw this stuff. You don't want to stack it too tight, so you want to kind of puff it out a little bit. But you want it to be pretty stringy. And all you're doing is building your head. And then in turn, it's going to kind of flow together and make everything look real pretty. So we want to get all the twists out of that dubbing loop before we stuff this stuff in there. Up and in. 
I don't know what it is about dubbing loops, but everybody wants to see dubbing loops. You notice that, Ricky? They're fun. They're fun. You know who's really good at dubbing loops is our good man, good friend, Zach Copeland. He loves the dubbing loops. So, the thing with this dubbing loop is that you're better to have too much than not enough. You'll see here, especially when you start building, wrapping it up around the head here what I'm talking about okay so you got all this beautiful material in I don't know if you can see that hopefully you can once again try and pull some of this back if you have a jug of water with you it makes it easier and all you're gonna do is just spin this up this nifty tool get it tight nice and tight you don't want any of that fibers falling out and then you can make yourself some popsicle sticks with a little chunk of velcro on it all you're gonna do is pull some of those trap fibers out that is a very very important step for the simple reason that you're trying to build a head that all flows together and if you trap all that stuff in on that dubbing loop it's not gonna have the same flow you need that flow you can see how buggy it's getting now. It's static. Static cling. Okay, so we're getting that in there. So now we got it locked down, pulling it around. As you're pulling it, you're pruning it, preening it, preening it back. You don't want to trap all that stuff. You're going to go over, one back, one forward, and back. We'll put one more behind one in front we'll go back one more forward man is this just the funnest stuff to work with hey eh, ricky so you can see what's happening here that long 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 dubbing loop that i had sitting in there is not so long anymore so pulling that bobbin off the cradle we're gonna get in here and lock that dubbing loop off and then we're going to clean up the head, make it real pretty. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. And all you're going to do is peel this stuff back. Try your best to get all back trapped out. And we're just going to get busy and make a beautiful pink head. And in this case, I was wishing it would have been red. So if you do have red thread, Red thread works really well. You want to make sure that you got no black through there. Whip finish that bad boy. And then we're going to get crafty with that Velcro strip one more time here. It is quiet in here now. Now that there's no people. <laughs> Dude was so busy in here earlier. Okay, so cut that guy off. And we're going to get busy with the solder as bone dry one more time here, ladies and gentlemen, just to fix this up and make it look real pretty. It's amazing how that makes those heads look so sexy. Just like so. Give it a couple seconds to roll through and make sure it gets into all them nice threads. Then we lock it down. Smoke it. Smoking. We don't want to inhale that too much, I don't think. Okay, so just a little bit of light will do. And as you're using these, while it's sunny out there, it's just going to continue to cure, but I mean, it's already cured. Take this Velcro strip once again. And what you're going to do is just peel some of this back over top. You can see how it's working. Working real sexy like. Okay, so you're looking at it. It's looking probably a little weird right now because it's not wet. So if i had a bucket of water here i'd be able to dump that sucker in it but what happens when this thing gets wet is it all starts to collapse on itself i don't know if you can see this one it's identical pattern and it's exactly and this one's half dry because i don't really like sticking dripping wet flies in my beautiful mongoose vise but that's what happens is that it all uniforms together and you get this beautiful minnow 
leechy looking sexiness, sexy, supple, whatever else is really awesome in S words. But then we're going to give this guy a slow roll. Gives you an idea as to what it should look like when you're done. If you want to get real crafty, you could probably put like a black dot in the center of the dumbbell eye. But I assure you, this pattern, are we up top? Camera four? Camera three. Camera three. That means we're up top too. Getting crazy. This pattern will work for all Pacific salmon. I've used it. Well, you just change the colors. Sometimes you got to go with black. Pink works really well too. Black and pink. Uh, chartreuse, white. I like chartreuse and white. Works really well together. Uh, just different combos. And all you're looking for is contrast um, between instead of using just one solid color, mix it up, put two colors together, maybe three colors. Um, and if it is, it and you good in dirty water. Yeah, dark dark colors work outline, well, sure. and uh, on bright days you like the bright colors. So, anyhow, this is our fly for today. My second, I'm really outdoing myself today. And uh, or Ricky, are you up next or Scotty going? I can go. Ricky is in the house and he's got a good show for you. Other than that, if we don't have another show before Christmas, I'd like to wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and best of luck in the New Year. And uh, get off your couch. Come down and visit us here at Spud Valley Sporting Goods, 1380 Birch Street. Uh, if you're new to fly tying, we've got three or four guys here that know what they're doing with fly tying. And we can sit down and show you a few easy techniques that'll put you on a fast, tra fast track to success. Uh, once again, that's 1380 Birch Street in downtown Pemberton. Stop by Spud Valley Sporting Goods. Camera 5.